Hello, my name is Awad Rahman Ahmed, a PhD student from the University of Oslo. I am presenting our work, Generative Adversarial Networks and Transfer Learning for Non-Intrusive Load Monitoring in Smart Grids, co-authored by my supervisors, Professor Yan Zhang and Professor Frank Leeson. My agenda for this presentation is to start with introducing the scope of this paper and discussing a NIL model showing how we use generative adversarial networks to solve the non-intrusive load monitoring problem. Then I show how we apply transfer learning to GAN NILM to achieve some level of model generalizability. Next, I will illustrate a second model, TR GAN NILM, which achieved more robust generalizability. Lastly, I will give a conclusion and some future work suggestions. In this paper, we address an interesting question that is if we can break down the total power consumption of a building to its appliance level power consumption, telling which appliances are consuming power at specific time only from the aggregate measurement signal. This is load monitoring, but because it's done by only knowing the total consumption without the need for installing individual sensors for each appliance, then it's called non-intrusive load monitoring or NELM. So the NELM system takes, for example, a smart meter measurement and outputs the appliance level consumption. Why do we want to do that? Because giving such detailed feedback helps the consumers to economize their consumption, leading to cost savings and energy efficiency. How are NELM developers solving it so far? There are two main paths in the literature. One is approaching NELM as an optimization problem, trying to find the best combination of individual appliances to minimize the difference between the total consumption and the sum of individual appliances. But the recent and promising path is to perceive NILM as a pattern recognition problem by utilizing uh, some machine learning methods. Even though there is a significant work to develop accurate NILM designs, there is still a big room for improvement on the NILM accuracy. And another really untouched issue is the generalizability of the models and how can we learn models that can work well on unseen buildings. This paper focuses on addressing these two issues, the needle accuracy and the model generalizability, trying to propose solutions for them. To tackle the accuracy issue, we utilize generative adversarial networks or GANs as a backbone for our solutions. GANs are a machine learning framework which has the ability to generate fake but re realistic looking data from noise. And the standard setting of GAN as shown in this figure consists of two models trained in opposition of each other to each other, a generator network G, which maps a random noise vector Z to a fake data G of Z. The other model is the discriminator D, which receives this fake data as an input and tries to classify it as fake data generated by G or real data from the data set X. The discriminator is basically a, a classifier that is trained to minimize the negative log likelihood for uh, assigning its input to the correct class based on the uh, on a loss function as such as the cross entropy. The notion of this being an adversarial training comes from the fact that the generator is trained to minimize the negative of the discriminator objective. Compactly, GAN objective can be represented as a min-max game, and after training, the generator should be able to generate fake samples that can fool the discriminator. Our motivation for using GANs for NILM has two facets. First, GAN's framework is proven to be successful in producing outputs that are hardly distinguishable from the real data. For NILM, this means generating, generating more realistic appliance profiles and increasing the overall accuracy. The second facet is that the GAN's setting allows our model to automatically and implicitly learn loss functions more precisely, the discriminator part does this loss function learning, and this can empower our models to learn 
more complex loss functions that cannot be easily represented explicitly by, for example, mean square error. So here, we propose Ghanim architecture to map an aggregate measurement, for example, smart meter reading, to the appliance level measurement. Specifically during training, the generator generates an appliance measurement conditioned by the aggregate signal, while the discriminator has the access to the appliance ground truth and tells if this generated appliance is real or not. In order to stabilize the training and get the desired results, as an input to the discriminator, the generated appliance has to be concatenated with the corresponding aggregate measurement. We show this by the function C in the objective functions here. A second point is to relax the generator objective by using feature matching instead of using the classifier output, meaning that we calculate the loss based on the features of the next to last layer of the discriminator and not the last layer. And here it's donated by the function f, and intuitively it is like asking the question how far the generated samples from being real, instead of asking a yes or no question, is the generated sample real or fake? This table shows the GAN-NILM details, and it's worth noting that the generator has two convolution layers, and this is to add uh, translation and in, trans, translational invariance to allow recognizing the appliance if its position is shifted within uh, the input window. And the layer used for the feature matching is dense 4 in the discriminator network, and this layer should have the same size of the input window edge. Generally, in GANs, after training, the generator part should be able to generate fake samples without the need for the discriminator, which is normally thrown away. But for our gan during the deployment, the input is a long sequence of aggregate measurement, which should be segmented using overlapping sliding windows that equal to the size of our model input. And the problem here is that the overlapping areas will have more than one prediction. Some literature propose averaging those multiple predictions, but we approach this differently by exploiting the discriminator part instead of throwing it away. Particularly, after training gan the discriminator should be able to assign probability values to each generated appliance based on how likely the prediction to be real. So for each sliding window, the generator output a prediction and the discriminator calculates the probability of that prediction being real. And now we can use these probability values to determine the most likely prediction. We evaluated the model on three data sets, Refit, UKDL, and RED, for common appliances across the three data sets. For the data preparation to automate locating the ground truth appliance activations, we convolved a one-dimensional Sobel filter to find the edges. And to increase our training data, we use partial activations in the training set as some sort of data augmentation. We compare GAN-NELM with two recent successful methods. One is the denoising autoencoder, and the other is sequence to point NELM, which is based on convolutional neural networks. And in the figure, we report F1 score, but also we can report mean absolute error. And the GAN-NELM is the darkest bars in the plot. And we can see that GAN-NELM outperforms the other methods on the overall performance and most of the appliances. Even with the limited data, as the case of RED dataset, which has only a few weeks of data, GAN-NILM can do very well compared, for example, to the denoising autoencoder. The second essential question we address in this paper is how to accomplish a generalizable NIL and utilize some source domain buildings which have surplus of data to disaggregate other target domain buildings which have limited data. We assume that each target domain building has less than 10% of the source domain training data. 
In order to quantify the generalizability, we define two quantities. The first is the transfer gain as the difference between the accuracy of a model that trained on the source domain, then transferred to the target domain, and the accuracy of another model which is trained from scratch on the limited data of the target domain. If this transfer gain is positive, that means the transferred model has better performance and is able to transfer some knowledge from the source to the target. The second quantity we define is the similarity between these two domains as the statistical distance between them. We calculate the average dynamic time wrapping distance between source and target time series. Then we plot the transfer gain as a function of this similarity. In neural networks, transfer learning by parameter sharing is a way to transfer the knowledge learned from a source domain to a target domain. Is that we train a model on the source domain data, then share the model parameters that we believe they hold generic and common features, and retrain the rest of the model parameters on the target domain. The usual way of transfer learning by parameter sharing, for example, in convolution neural networks, is by sharing the first layers of the models of the model and retrain the rest of the target data uh, on the target data. But in GANILM, it's a bit more complicated as we have two networks, generate and discriminator, and we cannot intuitively know which network and which part of this network holds the generic common features. So we performed an, an investigational procedure to know which network holds the generic feature and the shareable parameters. The procedure starts with by training a model M on the source domain. Then we progressively share G layers of the generator and D layers of the discriminator and randomly initialize the rest of the layers parameters. And every combination gives us a new model M star that we can retrain on the target data by either fine tuning or freezing the shared parameters. After retraining the model and tested on the target data, we save its performance. We repeat this procedure for different pairs of source and target, and we think we came up with some interesting conclusion. These two plots will show the average performance trends from the discriminator point of view on the left and the generator point of view on the right. The x-axis shows the layers D or G until which we share the parameters and after which we initialize the parameters. And the y-axis is the performance of the, target, of, the, of the model on the target domain. In the case of freezing the shared parameters, the left plot shows us that the more layers we transfer from the discriminator, the less, the less performance we get uh, on the target domain which is an obvious clue that the discriminator holds domain-specific features. However, on the right plot, the generator performance stays almost flat with its best performance when sharing all the generator parameters, which is a strong indication that the generator holds mostly uh, generic features. This conclusion holds in the case of fine-tuning on the yellow plots, but now both of the discriminator and the generate have better performance than fixing the shared parameters. From this, we can confidently say that our best option to, for transfer learning by parameter sharing is uh, to share the whole generator parameters and initialize the whole discriminator. In other words, first we train a GAN NILM on uh, the source domain, second, we transfer the generated parameters, then we start retraining the, uh, with fine tuning the tar on the target domain with, the fresh, with a fresh uh, discriminator. Taking this conclusion, we examine the 18 combinations of source and target uh, data and the three different main cases, 
based on the relation between the source and target domains. One, if the domains are from the same data set, but different buildings. Two, if they belong to the same country, but different data sets. Three, if they belong to different countries. For each combination, we calculate the statistical distance between the source and the target data based on dynamic time wrapping and rank them based on the distance on the x-axis. Then we plot the transfer gain on the y-axis. Here I recall that the transfer gain is a difference between the performance of the transfer model and the performance of a model trained from scratch on the target data. We can see that the transfer gain is positive when the distance between the two domains is relatively small, then starts decreasing till it flips to negative values when the statistical distance becomes more significant. Particularly after point 0.13, which means that it's better to train the model from scratch rather than using transfer learning as transfer learning might hurt the performance. This statistical distance sensitivity motivated us to propose our second model. We propose our second model, TRGAN-NILM, which allows the generator to learn common and compact representations in the feature space between the source and the target domains with the help of another auxiliary discriminated DTR. In this model, the generator takes both the source and target domain aggregate measurements as inputs. Then the auxiliary discriminator has the access, DTR has the access to the latent representations Z, and its task is to distinguish between the source and the target domain's representation ZT and ZS in the feature space. The main discriminator D has similar objective to the one of Gan Nelm we saw earlier. But now we calculate the loss considering both domains with some weighting parameter beta. The generator objective has two components. One is the adversarial loss against the main discriminator D using feature matching as before. And the other is against the auxiliary discriminator DTR with some weighting parameter gamma. The generator has a bottleneck-like architecture in order to learn compact representations. Comparing TR-GAN-NILM with our previous transfer learning approach parameter sharing for GAN-NILM, we can see that TR-GAN-NILM on the yellow plot is always achieving a positive and even higher transfer gain compared to our previous approach. Also, this transfer gain stays positive even when the statistical distance becomes more significant. Uh, in this presentation, we showed how, GAN, how GANs can be used to achieve a high performance NILM solution proposing GAN uh, NIL model. We saw uh, also we, we show how uh, to apply transfer learning by parameter sharing to GAN NILM and we showed um, the generator mostly holds generic features and uh, uh, the discriminator holds domain specific features and also we discussed how the approach is sensitive to the statistical distance between the source and the target domain and how we alleviated this by proposing our second model tr gan nil by learning common representation of the feature space between the domains the proposed approach is use limited target domain data but it's a possible uh, future extension can study using no appliance data from the target domain in a semi-supervised manner. This is the end of my presentation. Thank you very much.